And hi there everybody, this is Greg Norad here and I'm going to show you this absolutely unbelievable digital keyboard, the KAG100 by Kurzweil. Now what you're looking at here is just a magnificent ebony polish grand piano style case here. A lot of times you'll just see this feature right here where they're in this shape. What this one adds to it is it also has the lid that comes up with the lid prop so that I can put this lid up and it looks really just like I'm looking at a little miniature grand piano. A lot of people really just love that look itself and it doesn't take up all of the space as a normal grand piano so it's a great feature to have on this as far as for the look. It's just a beautiful instrument. I'll lift up the, uh, the fall board that covers the keys right there and you can have a look at the instrument itself right here. We have an 88 note weighted action keyboard. Weighted action gives you that feeling that you would get with a normal uh, piano and so you have 88 keys which is standard for all pianos and it gives you all of those features and so much more on top of it. So I'm going to sit down here and we're going to take a look at what's uh, what's inside of the instrument for right now. You have a little display, a two-line display that will tell you what is going on in the instrument right now and so we're going to go through some of the voices right now. Here, first one we have is the grand piano. And what you're hearing here is 64 note poly polyphony. What that means is that it'll play 64 notes all at the same time. Uh, it'll, play, it'll play more than that if you've got enough fingers to do 65 or more. Uh, it'll start cutting off on you. But 64 note polyphony gives you a lot of good sound. We've got a lot of sounds to pick from in this particular instrument. And you have a couple ways that you can navigate to get to those. But we have a little number pad that's right here. We also have a little plus and minus buttons if we just want to go one at a time. And I'm just going to go through a few sounds. We've already heard the, this fantastic grand piano here. Now we're going to go up a notch here. We're going to try out a massive pipe organ sound. And so I'm waiting for it to load up. almost like you're in the cathedral itself right there when you listen to that. We've got guitars. Let's get it tuned up there. Fantastic uh, guitar sound that we have here. We also have strings that we can pick from. Some of the most beautiful strings you're going to hear. Choir joining in. And now it's time to have the brass section join in here, and it has an absolutely a fantastic brass section here. We're going to hit the, hit the little buttons to get that section up. We also have a great woodwind section on here which starts with the great saxophone. Nice sax solo. Can we all join in? Beautiful English horn song. Beautiful, beautiful flute. So you have just an absolutely amazing array of sounds here. I'm going to go back to the piano now for just a moment. 
so we can get uh, another another texture here. So now I have just piano. What I'd like is I'd like to have some strings playing behind that. It's very easy to do. There's a little button here called layer and I simply push that button and when I do it's going to show me the sound that's going to mix with it. In this case it's called ensemble which is a, a massive string sound and now when I play the piano I hear those beautiful strings playing behind it now. Go in and you can easily pick whatever sound that you want to mix one with the other. All you do is hit the layer button, it'll show you that second sound, and then you'll simply just select it from the keypad. The other thing I want to show you is we can also split the sound. A lot of times people like to play something with the left hand, like a bass sound, and something with the right. So if I hit the split button, it's going to show me that sound that's playing in the left. In this case, it's the acoustic bass. It'll have a split point. In this case, it's right there my bass, there's my piano, and now I can do a little duo with myself. So a lot of fun that you can do just doing that particular thing. The other thing that you'll notice with this particular sound is it is touch sensitive with this keyboard. Not only do I have the 88 keys and the weight, but I also have the touch sensitivity so I can play very soft. As I hit the keys harder, That's a feature that you have on an acoustic piano that they've added to this particular instrument and it's just an absolute great way to express yourself in the music. It's just really fantastic. Now what you're hearing there is some really beautiful effects that actually sounds like I'm playing in a big music hall or a big building right there and that is what we get with the the reverb section here now when i turn that reverb on i actually have the option of changing that reverb and that's what we call a room setting or i can dial it up to a really a big massive hall and so it gives you that nice big wash of sound that you might want to have for your particular music. You also have effects like chorusing, which really lets you, you kind of give it a different effect to the uh, piano. Here's with the chorus off. nice features that you have right there. The other feature I want to talk about is the transpose feature. A lot of times people say, well, what would I use that for? Well, sometimes pianists, I'm lucky, I can play in all of the keys, but some others, uh, sometimes people just learn how to play in one or two or maybe three keys, and then they'll encounter a vocalist, and they'll say, hey, play that in the key of whatever, and then they find that they can't. What the transpose button will let you do, so if I was playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, My vocalist says, hey, I can't sing that in the key of C. I need to sing, I need to sing that a little lower. All I have to do is hit this little down button if I need to go down. And every time I hit it, it'll go down a half step. So there's standard C. And I just went down four steps right there. So you're sitting there and you're having a party and you say, hey, I know how to sing. And you say, all right, how about playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Soap Star and we'll sing it. They go, oh, I can't sing in that key. That's way too high for me. Can you sing it? Can you play it for me in A flat? 
and you none the wiser to anybody else, you say A flat, oh sure, I'll take that down four steps for you, here we go. be our secret that you could play an A flat instead of just the key of C. But that's a great feature to have uh, that you can use for this. Uh, we talked about effect. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the, uh, the rhythm section and the automatic accompaniment. So we have what's called, you hit the button called chord here. Uh, it will let you, remember we split the keyboard and it will let me hit a note now and it will give me the whole chord and bass that goes with it. If I want it to be a minor chord, I just simply hit the black note below it. If I want it to be a seventh chord, I hit the white note below it. Now where this really takes off is when you add to it the rhythm section. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do the first one that's on here right now. Now those are really fantastic sounds. Now, uh, if you want to take a listen to some other types of uh, automatic, let's try let's try a big band type sound, which would give us a nice uh, a nice uh, sound. We're going to switch over back. Let's go back to that uh, saxophone that we had earlier, and that's number 67. I'm going to just type it in right there. I hit my synchro, which means it's going to start when I hit the key. I'm going to ask it to give me an intro and ending, and so when I hit this first key, it's going to start. So that's what you can do on the accompaniment section. A lot of times you'll hear the term arranger keyboard, and that's really what this is. It lets you kind of have that whole big band sound uh, that you're looking for. So the other thing that we want to show you now is that, let's say that you have a favorite sound on here, and you don't want to have to scroll through, or you know, I, I don't want to have to remember that 67 is my saxophone. I'd like to just be able to go to it as fast as possible. Well, what it has for us here is it has a a, uh, a registration memory where you can just hit a button and then you're going to have the sound that you want. It's real easy for the grand piano because we actually have a preset registration for grand piano right there to give us that great grand piano sound. Now let's say that I want to have that saxophone at instant recall. What I'm going to do is first turn my saxophone on. <laughs> And then right over here, all I have to do is hold the store button and pick one of these five M1, M, M2, M3, M4, M5 buttons. I simply hit that button and it saves that registration for me right there. So, I'm back at my grand piano. I want my sax, I just simply hit that. have up to 20 of those particular uh, settings where they're preset for you. Really works great if you're at a church or you're playing a gig where you're actually in a band setting and you need to be able to access your sounds on the quick. It gives you that facility to do that right there, which is really, really fantastic. 
So the last thing I want to talk to you about uh, with the functionality here is that uh, you can also do recordings on this. It has a up to two track recorder on here that you can actually record your own music and have a little bit of fun right like that. Now you might not be able to do a soundtrack for an entire movie where it sounds like a whole orchestra playing, but it does give you a chance to record yourself, listen to it back, and it's a lot of fun. One of the things you'll hear that will start on the recordings is the metronome. And we do have a metronome right here. For those of you that are used to practicing with a metronome, you can actually use this. I can adjust the tempo on it. I can do all kinds of things. And so it's a nice feature for you to play along with. It also will come into play when we do the recording. Now, the first thing we'll need to do is put in a USB stick. Uh, that's what activates the recording section so that we can actually go in there and do our recording. And so the first thing I'm going to do is hit, I want to go back to my grand piano setting. And so now I'm going to do a little bit of a recording for you. We'll just do a little short thing so you get a taste of what it's like. I hit the record button and it immediately takes me into that note. play button and there I am playing again now as I listen to that I can't help but think you know well, how great this would sound if I were able to put uh, those strings that we played a little bit ago the Actually, if I put it on, I could play along with it right now. Hey, that sounded pretty good. Let's try recording it. If we want, we'll hold it. We push this USB memory button and the record at the same time, and a little count off. play button and there they are congratulations you have your own recording studio now so it's really just a fantastic instrument you have so many different features on it just to play as far as for when you look over here in this part of the uh, the section here you're going to have all of the features one of the things that I can do from the panel is I can control how much bass and how much treble I have so you can really dial in the tone of the instrument itself. It has inside here, inside of the lid prop, you can see, that you can see the little uh, speaker grills right here. And what that's giving you right there is four speakers and you're getting 35 watts of power in stereo with that, uh, with that particular uh, setup right there, which is a lot, of, a lot of power. We're in a big space right here and it really fills up the space. It'll just absolutely go, go crazy in your home. It also has auxiliary uh, end jacks if you want to plug in like a guitar or something like that. It also has left and right audio in and out jacks on here. And then you also have a Bluetooth feature that you can use on this. Uh, as far as for other inputs, it's got the USB input and also has a MIDI out input if you want to use it as a controller keyboard. And all of this is in a illustrious 150 pound package. And let's not forget that you also get the bench with it here. So this is a fantastic instrument. Not only does it have that beautiful look of a grand piano, it also has the sound of the piano along with all of the other things that you had the opportunity to listen to it uh, listen to it with us today. And so if you're interested in this particular piano, make sure you are on our homepage. That is at www.pianocenter. That's all one word, pianocenter.com. And when you're on that homepage, take a look at the top of the screen and you'll find that 800 number that you want to call us at. Give us a call and say, I want to talk to somebody about the Kurzweil KAG100 that Greg was talking about. I absolutely love this instrument and I know you will too.